Hello everyone and today we're going to be continuing on with the circulatory system. Um, however, specifically we're going to be learning how the heart transports blood around the body. So the heart of course is the centre of our circulatory system. So this here is a very nice appetising image of our heart. Um, the heart, of course, is an organ, which means it is a group of two or more tissues combined to form a structure with a specific purpose. Um, so it's filled with cardiac muscle tissue, epithelial tissue, nervous tissue and connective tissue. So these all combine together to pump the blood around our body. So the cardiac muscles are stimulated to contract by electric impulses from our muscle tissue. These muscle cells have a high concentration of mitochondria. Okay, so that's really important to note. There's a high concentration of mitochondria, right? Because mitochondria are the powerhouse um, of our cells, which means that it does require a lot of energy, right? Our heart is constantly pumping. We don't even think about it. It's an involuntary movement for us. Um, of course, this is um, the contraction that forms the basis of our heartbeat. So the heart has four chambers, okay? So the left side of the heart pumps blood to the whole body, where the right side of the heart pumps blood to the lungs. So we can here, see here, we've got our left atrium, left ventricle. So remember, this was the one that pumps it to the whole body. Right atrium, right ventricle, whoops, went the other way around, um, pumps blood to the lungs. And then again, looking at it this way again, so if you're looking at it directly, front on, <laughs> left for you, I'm going to get this so wrong, right, <laughs> is that right? I don't know my left and right, it's left, right, my bad. <laughs> um, so luckily this is labelled because I'm not good left and right, especially trying to look in the camera left and right when it's reversed. Um, so the blood comes back from the body through the veins. So remember the veins, they're the ones that go um, to the heart, whereas the arteries go away from the heart. So this is the final vein that brings blood directly into the heart. So this is called um, the vena cava. Okay, so this vena cava is what um, comes into, so here, enters into our right atrium. So this is our first um, chamber here. The heart then pushes the blood into the next chamber, which is our right ventricle. And then you can see here there's a valve um, that prevents the blood flowing back, okay, into the atrium. Um, then the blood leaves and then um, flows into um, the pulmonary article um, with the artery, the valve stopping it from coming back here. Okay. Um, oxygenated blood returns from the lungs via the pulmonary vein. So that's going to be the one. You can't quite see it. It's kind of um, behind it. Okay, so it's coming in from behind, like it's a bit of an awkward situation right now, can't really rotate it, um, but it enters into our left atrium here, again pushes into here, there's actually a valve in here that I forgot to mention on this side, that's stopping it from going back, and then again it's going to push it from the left um, atrium into the left ventricle, and then um, that will then leave here through what we call the aorta and again there's another valve here that stops it from pushing back again um, into where we don't want it to be. So we have as you noticed the veins as well and we're looking at our circulatory system as a whole. Um, the veins also had a valve that stopped the blood pushing backwards too. So just think there's a lot of different systems in our body that actually do utilise valves to stop things from going back where we don't want them to go into. Um, so the heart, of course, needs to supply itself with oxygen. So we've got these coronary arteries. So you might have heard of like coron, coron, coron I can't say it, <laughs> coronary diseases, um, which is like that, you know, you often associate um, 
like I've got lots of fat build up and things like that um and you know which then can lead to heart attacks so um for me I when I think of coronary heart disease um it's really referring to directly the veins that are and the arteries to do with what's oxygenating our blood right I think if that clogs up then the rest of our body's not going to go because it's not transporting all the nutrients that needs to happen um, so two major arteries leave the aorta. So remember that aorta was this big one here, okay? Um, and two major arteries leave the aorta and travel throughout the heart to make sure that the art, heart also stays oxygenating and has all the different materials and things that it needs. So something to think about, what is the key difference between the left side left side of the heart compared to the right side okay think about um is the blood oxygenating oxygenated or not oxygenated um also think about where it's going or where it's coming from okay so those are some of those key differences that you should be thinking about i'm going to ask someone in class what they think the key difference between the left and right side of the heart is um here is a video you can find in the support content of our OneNote. So the cardiac cycle can be heard as two distinct sounds. So that's linked in there for you to see. Um, so like I said, the heart's heard in two distinct sounds. So before any sounds are made, the atria and the ventricles relax, which allows the blood to move into the left and right atria. A cycle would have just finished, so the valves that shut off the arteries will be closed. So this is called a diastole. The pressure in your blood vessels during this time is called diastolic pressure and it should be about 80. Okay. If you didn't understand any of that, do not hesitate to write down any questions and ask me in class time. So once that happens, you're actually move the blood into ventricles on the first pump. Okay, so moving them into the ventricles. So that's that first step here. 